morning. Welcome back to Michelle's Money Minutes on Morning Coffee this wonderful Monday morning. I am so proud and happy to have with me here today Dan Rutolo, who's a CPA and is going to give us some really great advice and information about planning for the new year and closing out this one. Dan, please tell our, tell our audience about yourself. Yeah, my name's uh, Dan Rotolo. Uh, I'm a CPA, have an office in uh, Mount Laurel, right up the street at Hartford and uh, Route 38. And we're a CPA firm. I started in 1991, so I guess it's 25 years. I started when I was maybe three or four years old. And, Congratulations. Uh, yeah, so I was a prodigy, I guess, when I was born in the accounting. But, yeah, we've been in business 25 years now and uh, work with nonprofit organizations, small businesses, individual. And our goal is to try and help them meet their financial goals and hopefully pay the, the least amount of legitimate tax as possible. <laughs> Legitimate tax. Yes, yes. Okay, so so here we are at the very beginning of December, and I myself last night was starting to go through my different receipts and categorize things and knowing that the end is coming of this year and I need to prepare. And it would have been great to talk to you then, but now our audience is talking to you. So tell us and tell me, what, what should I be doing today to prepare for the year end and how I want to make sure that I can benefit as much as possible from the tax uh, code as it currently stands and what I might expect. Well, I, I think the first thing is that's great that you're starting before the end of the year. Uh, that I always recommend because a lot of people do wait and then they feel like it's a big surprise when their accountant says that they owe taxes or they're getting a refund. And really what we try and do and what you should try and do is take the mystery out of it. You really don't need to wait until the end of the year when you get all of your paperwork and say, wow, I didn't realize I owed money or I'm getting money back. So I'm, I'm a firm believer that planning is, is really important. So start looking at that. And I look at every dollar in most cases can save you, you know, 20 to 30 cents on a dollar. So those little receipts that people just say, oh, yeah, I'm going to put it in my wallet or I can't find that. You just need to remember that every one of those adds up. And if that's a $20 receipt, you just basically gave away $6 worth of expenses. So, it, you know, I know it's hard for a lot of people to stay organized, but you need to, un I hope that sinks into people that, wait a minute, if I lose that receipt for $20, I just literally just gave the government an extra 4 to $6. And I usually recommend you get an envelope. And I, I tell my clients, I understand it. I try and keep it as simple as possible. And I say, keep an envelope, anything that comes up, business-wise, put it in that envelope, and at the end of the year, like you're doing, you said last night in December, open that up, organize it, so that this way when we do your tax return, when tax season comes, we could be talking more about planning and what your goals are and how we can help you versus trying to figure out where all of your receipts are and how they make sense. Okay, so before I come to your office to say, okay, time to do my tax returns, what should I do with that envelope? Should I sit down, as I actually am, should I sit down and, and start parsing it into different categories or make photocopies? What, what is it that would be most efficient and effective for me to not be giving the government an extra $6? Because it makes me think like the government's pickpocketing me if I'm giving $6 for every 20 Ouch. Right. No, I think the first thing is you should summarize it because one thing is you'll know best what, how those receipts were. So you can look at a receipt and say, oh, I know what I spent this for if this is a business. If you just hand those receipts over to your accountant, number one, you're going to be paying an, an, uh, an extra charge for that, and, and that you really don't want to do. You want to pay your accountant for their advice and them saving you money, not you know, cleaning up your mess or doing administrative stuff. So it's really good to go through that. And there are different ways of being able to do that now. If you have credit card statements, you can get a download of your entire year's worth of transactions. Uh, like if you use American Express or any of those, you can get a year-end statement and you can put that in a uh, program called Excel. And now all of that stuff is almost categorized for you, and you can move some of those columns around. So Wait, with, wait, wait. I have to ask. Is that enough? If I have my American Express statement, can I give that to the government, or do I actually need the paper receipts for everything that I spent on? No, you need to have your receipts, but as far as summarizing it, okay. instead of picking up a receipt and saying, all right, let me write down what it was for in the category, what you can do is use that almost as your source. Download okay. everything from American Express. Now it has the name of the company in there, the date you paid it, and stuff like that. And then you can just use your receipt 
to really just match it up. One, make sure that you picked up all of the receipts, because if you're just keeping your receipts and you're not going from your credit card statement, you're never going to be able to pick up, oh, geez, I never, that's right, I did buy that, and I never really got a receipt for it. So if you do get audited by the IRS, which I hope nobody on the, ho hopefully nobody hearing this uh, has to go through that process, but they would want, uh, the credit card statements just aren't enough in many cases. They want to see actual receipts. Okay, credit card statements not enough. A little bit scary to some people at the end of the year, but if they haven't done that system of having an envelope, certainly maybe for January as we get ready to uh, step into the new year. And and would you maybe suggest having a few different envelopes? Like I I would wonder, um, you know, should I have one for my meals, one for my office supplies, one for my computer equipment, is there any kind of advice that you have as to how uh, our, our investor or individuals and our companies should keep track of those expenses in those envelopes? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, if you start breaking them up into each of those different envelopes, it really depends upon the volume of you know, of activity you have. You know, if you're looking at that you're going to have to spend, you know, two weeks summarizing all that from one envelope, stacking it out by each, then I would recommend, you know, uh, getting separate envelopes for that. But in most cases, having one maybe for auto, auto kind of stuff, so your gas receipts, your you know, your tolls, that kind of stuff is good because you usually report auto. If you use your auto for your tax return, there are separate reporting requirements just for that. So I personally keep one for auto and I keep one for my business expenses. Okay. And, you know, I am in the process of every month I have to fill out an expense report. So I basically go through and kind of go through that sorting process monthly. So. You know, it depends upon, you know, the activity. Okay. You may want to do a quarterly through the year. It depends upon how much pain you want to put yourself through. Okay, so certainly less painful if I do a little bit every month. So if every month, or maybe, I don't know, have a separate envelope for each month, is that crazy? I don't know. No, I th uh, that's actually, that would be the next step. So if you don't have just one envelope, I think having an envelope by month is the next step. And then if you really think you want more detail in that, then you know, break it out in all of those, all of those envelopes. All right. Well, that sounds like some great advice, Dan. Thank you so much. We're going to take a short break, and then I wanted to come back and talk to you a little bit about what's going to happen next year and the taxes and the tax brackets and how you can give us some information and maybe prepare us a little bit for what's to come. So stay right there. My job is to run and manage my own spa one day. To be the general manager for the Jumeirah Hotel in Abu Dhabi, Dubai. I feel that Mercier's has prepared me very well for my future in the hospitality industry. The kitchen is incredible. You are planning the meal, doing all the costing and the recipes. You're in charge of everything going on in the kitchen. They really do get you prepared and they want to make sure that you have a job after college. When it comes to injuries, they're not all created equal. That's why at Performance Spine and Sports Medicine, our team of doctors will coordinate and customize your care to provide the best treatment options using the area's most advanced medical technology. All with one goal in mind. To get you back in the game. We call life. Pain-free. Drug-free. Surgery-free. That's what we do here at Performance Spine and Sports Medicine. Get better faster. Stay better longer. Saving your business money is as easy as one, two, three. Tanker Consulting Services, a payment solutions expert, will show you how with a free, detailed, written analysis illustrating your cost savings. We usually uncover savings between 10 and 25 percent and sometimes more. We can help your business succeed by providing reliable and secure merchant payment solutions such as merchant services programs, point of sale systems, and ATM machines. TCS, one of the leaders in regional credit card processing consulting, offers electronic payments to merchants locally and nationwide through our preferred vendor programs. We work to keep business costs down with a comprehensive suite of quality products, services, and customized credit card processing programs exclusively tailored for your company. TCS is convenient, reliable, and innovative with customer service available 24-7, 365 days a year. Our in-depth industry knowledge, partnership strategy, and innovative processing solutions allow for a specialized approach to providing merchant bank processing with 100% full fee disclosure. 
TCS is one-stop shopping for all your merchant services solutions. Our clients save money 100% of the time. Trust Tanker Consulting Services, the knowledgeable, professional, and friendly provider of secure payment services. We set the standard by which others are measured. Call now for a free written analysis. 609-922-0201. Today's show has been sponsored by More Than Gifts. Come see our new location in Marlton, New Jersey. Not just gifts, but more. Good, beautiful morning. I'm back with Dan Rutolo, who is a CPA, who's giving us some great advice about getting ready for our tax season, the end of this year, 2016, the beginning of next year, 2017. And on the break, Dan and I were talking about you know, what do individuals who are starting a business, there's so many now seeking a second stream of income, starting new businesses, what's some good advice that you can give to those entrepreneurs who think that they're investing in themselves and in their futures in their new business and aren't quite sure what to do with the money side when they're paying for marketing and new websites? What, what can they do, Dan? How, how can you uh, advise our people what to do? Yeah, I think there's actually a couple of recommendations I would make. The, the first is when you're starting a business uh, as an individual. It's hard. Sometimes you feel like, well, it's my money anyway, and a, a, lot, of comp a lot of people start paying their personal bills and have one bank account. So they'd be paying every one of their expenses out of there, plus their mortgage, plus their food and everything else. And that creates a couple of problems, really. It seems easier and you don't want to pay to have that additional bank account open, but it really makes it a lot more complicated when you actually go to accumulate it. Because if you go through what you go through now individually, well, picture doubling that because now you have to look at every one of your checks that you wrote and not only say, what was it for? You have to say, was this for business or personal? So it definitely uh, inflicts a lot of personal pain, but more <laughs> importantly, the pain I'd like to explain to people is it, it could possibly open up IRS pain for you. Meaning that what happens is if you ever do go through an audit, the first thing that they ask for is your bank statements because they want to make sure that the revenue that went through your bank account equals what kind of you reported as your business income and your expenses. Well, what happens now if you mix your business and your personal, in order to give them the business expenses, now you're giving them your personal bank accounts to do it, to justify the business. So my first recommendation for any business is if you're going to treat it like a real business, if this isn't a hobby and your plan is to grow this and really make it a serious business, then be serious about it. Open up a business bank account, run everything through there for business. And I know a lot of people say, well, it's hard because I'm buying stuff and, you know, I have my personal credit card and I use it for business. So I also recommend usually getting a business bank card bank uh, credit card and what I do is if I go through something if it's business I'll I have the two different cards and I put business on one and personal on the other and you know which card to use so it's really important to do that and just since you mentioned that the other thing it got me thinking of is kind of some you know I'll say some horror stories or some situations that I'd like to advise people of and that's really related to when you become a business it's really about what type of entity you choose and I don't want to get into all of the details of the different entities, but what happens is nowadays when people start businesses, their friends, their advisors will tell them, oh, you need to be an LLC. And in the old days, you used to have to use an attorney who made sure that they did that all right. Well, people now are going online and setting up business. You could set up a business in 15 minutes. That doesn't mean it's set up properly. It doesn't mean <laughs> that that's the right entity choice for you. So even if you are going to do that you're on, your set, on your own, please make sure that when you pick an entity choice, you really need to, to do some thinking and thought about it to say, is this the best way of, of setting it up? Okay, so, so for our potential listener who's just starting and doesn't really know which entity they want to uh, become, but knows that they do want to do this business and they are going to be investing some money into it as far as expenses for startup operations, absolutely no questions asked go to a different bank then or is, should it be a no, different you, bank no, or no as long as it's bank? a different as long as it's okay. a different bank account because different bank account so it can be right. the same bank right. but open up a separate business that you're going to run all of your business expenses through 
Right. And all of the revenue that's generated should also go into that account. Exactly. Okay. And then if you do personally have to put in, which most people starting a business out, have to take some of their personal money, instead of just paying the bills personally, actually transfer, let's say, $1,000 if you needed to pay bills. Actually deposit that in the business account and reflect that as a loan from you versus, you know, just actually writing out the check for those expenses. Right. So should they also do a, a note to themselves or, or some kind of a promissory note saying that they've now lent this money to their new entity? They don't necessarily need to need to do a note, but they should at least indicate to make sure that that doesn't get included in their income. Meaning that if you just go from deposits and say, oh, by the way, I made $10,000 in receipts. Well, if a thousand of that was your own money, you definitely don't want to be paying the IRS. I definitely IRS don't want to be paying the IRS money. on the money that I'm so. lending to my company. Okay, that's awesome advice. I think that's really great. So I, I alluded to you before the break that we would talk about the new tax brackets and what people can expect, you know, from this year ending and the coming year and the years to follow. And I know you're not a mind reader, right. and none of us are, but. I guess my first question for our audience would be, does anybody have to worry about what's going to happen for the year ending 2016? Are any of these alleged or, or proposed tax changes going to affect what's happening when I file my tax return before April 15, 2017? No, you're, you're comfortable with 2016, but like you said, as far as the crystal ball, the only thing I could say is the things will be changing for 2017 most likely. Uh, so, you know, what I would recommend to people is go through and do your normal tax return for 2016. Usually what you try and do planning wise, if you know tax rates are going to be going up the next year or going down, you can adjust how you report your income and say, well, I'd rather push that income into next year because it's going to be cheaper at a lower tax bracket. But whenever there's presidential elections, you really don't know 100% what's going to be happening. So what I would recommend is you're comfortable for 2016, do your taxes the way they were always done, but really when you meet with your accountant, start talking about 2017 you know, see how that would impact, if there are changes, how that would possibly impact your personal or business situation. And then let that person know, like, listen, if updates happen, which we know they're going to happen in 2017, if anything's going to seriously impact my taxes, I'd like you to let me know. So send me an update and say, oh, by the way, this provision has changed and it's either going to save you money or it's going to cost you money and communicate during the year. You shouldn't really wait until this time next year to do your 2017 tax return because there's a good chance that things would be different and you know as much as possible you don't want to be surprised at the end of the year. So 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 you can't really tell me right now if I should like run out and get a computer in December versus wait until January because we just don't know what's going to be the better option as far as the income and tax ramifications of those purchases. No, and uh, but I always look at it each year because you also have the time value of money. So even if you save ten dollar, you know, if you save ten dollars this year versus next year, you still have had the use of that money all year. So I usually tell clients if you're thinking about buying equipment or anything that's going to reduce your taxes for 2016, then then go ahead and do it. And you know, when 2017 changes come up, you can you know respond accordingly. Great advice, Dan. I hope you'll stand by. We have to take a little break right now, but we'll be back in just a moment and have some more great information for you and what you can expect for this year and next. When it's time for Jersey Mike's to give a sub some sizzle, this is the way. The way it's always been. The way it always should be. The way it always will be. Because that's just the way it's supposed to be. Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. My dream job is to run and manage my own spa one day. To be the general manager for the Jamiro Hotel in Abu Dhabi, Dubai. I feel that Mercier's has prepared me very well for my future in the hospitality industry. The kitchen is incredible. You are planning the meal, doing all the costing and the recipes. You're in charge of everything going on in the kitchen. They really do get you prepared and they want to make sure that you have a job after college. When it comes to injuries, they're not all created equal. 
That's why at Performance Spine and Sports Medicine, our team of doctors will coordinate and customize your care to provide the best treatment options using the area's most advanced medical technology. All with one goal in mind. To get you back in the game. We call life. Pain-free. Drug-free. Surgery-free. That's what we do here at Performance Spine and Sports Medicine. Get better faster. Stay better longer. Saving your business money is as easy as one, two, three. Tanker Consulting Services, a payment solutions expert, will show you how with a free, detailed, written analysis illustrating your cost savings. We usually uncover savings between 10 and 25% and sometimes more. We can help your business succeed by providing reliable and secure merchant payment solutions such as merchant services programs, point of sale systems, and ATM machines. TCS, one of the leaders in regional credit card processing consulting, offers electronic payments to merchants locally and nationwide through our preferred vendor programs. We work to keep business costs down with a comprehensive suite of quality products, services, and customized credit card processing programs exclusively tailored for your company. TCS is convenient, reliable, and innovative with customer service available 24-7, 365 days a year. Our in-depth industry knowledge, partnership strategy, and innovative processing solutions allow for a specialized approach to providing merchant bank processing with 100% full fee disclosure. TCS is one-stop shopping for all your merchant services solutions. Our clients save money 100% of the time. Trust Tanker Consulting Services, the knowledgeable, professional, and friendly provider of secure payment services. We set the standard by which others are measured. Call now for a free written analysis. 609-922-0201. Today's show has been sponsored by More Than Gifts. Come see our new location in Martha, New Jersey. Not just gifts, but more. Welcome back. I'm Michelle Gershfeld, and I'm here with Dan Rutolo, who's giving us some actually amazing and really informative advice. And on the break again, we were talking, and he brought up another excellent point, which is call your accountant now. Don't wait until next year. Find out where you stand right now. Dan, tell us some, some information that will uh, provide to our, our, our listening audience and our viewers as to why they should call you today. Yeah, I think the biggest thing uh, the audience should remember, whenever you have a significant thing in your life, whether you're buying a car, whether you're selling a house, or you're doing something, the first thing that should come to your mind is really to talk to your accountant you should at least mention it. I always tell clients our policy is that we don't bill for every second. So I tell clients I would much rather know about it now and if it's something that it's a quick question and takes two minutes, great and you're on your merry way. But if it's something that is significant, that's going to have a significant impact, then we would, you know, then we would keep track of our time and charge it. And I really did that because in the 25 years of starting to practice, I started realizing that I'm sitting down with clients in March, February, March, April doing their tax return. I'm seeing that they have to pay what I would consider probably taxes that they may or may not have to pay. And I'm like, well, we can't do anything about it. That decision was already made last year. So that's why when you were talking about like talk to them now, if there is anything, you could do, you can make changes now. You really can't do anything once, once January comes about. But just keep in mind, whatever it is, if there's something significant, you're refinancing your house, anything like that, you should at least consider if it's a major financial impact on you, sending your kids to school, paying for college, all of those types of things that impact your life. The first, que the first person you should be thinking about besides your family is, how does this impact me? Can I get in touch with my accountant and do that? Because they really should, we try and reduce the stress of taxes as much as possible. So if you have that relationship with your accountant, you know, then they're most probably most knowledgeable about your situation and can advise you that way. Right, and you said in your 25 years, you know, we were talking about you have many clients that you've had for decades and that you've seen them live through life and you've been their shoulder and their almost family member to talk to them about these really important issues that maybe their brother or sister or, or parent has some advice for but not necessarily the right advice or the legal advice. 
Yeah, it's always funny because we're coming off the holiday season and with Thanksgiving and <laughs> it always makes me laugh when I usually, our ro our phones are usually ringing right after Thanksgiving and it's like, oh, by the way, I'm, I'm going to do this and I heard it's going to save me all of this money and everything else and I'm like, oh, okay, where, where'd you hear that from? Oh, it was at Thanksgiving weekend, really? Yeah, I was talking to my Uncle Charlie. Really, what does Uncle Charlie do? Oh, he's a mechanic <laughs> or, you know, he's some other professional. I'm like, okay, so... So I don't know where you heard, you know, I don't know where he's getting that from, but you should probably talk to, you know, talk to me about those kind of decisions. But they'll come back with all these great ideas probably after, you know, a couple of uh, drinks at Thanksgiving and thinking like they're going to save all of these taxes because Uncle Charlie gave them this great, idea, great planning idea or whatever. Right. Well, hooray that Uncle Charlie is interested mm -hmm. and that the client had the wherewithal to say, okay, Uncle Charlie, you've had a few and I'm happy. Happy to hear your opinion. I'm going to go call Dan now because <laughs> Dan knows what I need to do. And, and that's really the best advice that you can, you know, have Dan as your accountant and he'll pick up the phone and talk to you and not charge you. Did I hear that right? For yeah, a minute for or two during the year so right. that you can make sure you're on track. And, you know, those who think that, well, I'm going to buy this car or my kids in school are going to refinance my house and I don't really, you know, need any professional advice because I know what I'm doing. Well, it'd be great to just be able to have that ability to call you, Dan, and say, am I right? I don't have anything to worry about, or am I wrong? Is there something that I should be doing today to protect myself? Because there you go again with the government pickpocketing you, basically for your failure to actually make that phone call today and say to Dan, hey, can you take a look at what I've done this year and see if there are any other things that we should do to protect some of that money and make sure that we're paying the right taxes, but not more than we have to. That, exactly, it's right? really preventive, preventive maintenance as much as possible, and there shouldn't be surprises. You really, you really don't want to put yourself in a in a surprise situation, whether it's in March, April, whenever you do your taxes, because to, in today's times you don't need to do that. You can almost know pretty close to what your return is going to be now, when you file it in April. Uh, you know, if you if you do the proper planning. And won't that really help us know how much we really shouldn't spend maybe on holiday presents if we know now that we're going to have a big tax bill that we need to take care of? It'd be so much better to know that, I think, today than find that out in March when we might have credit card bills from things that we're doing this December right now. So call Dan. Dan, tell us, everybody, uh, you know, how we can get in touch with you and sure. all my of your great information. Yeah, my name's Dan Rotolo. Our accounting firm's Rotolo, Speedwack & Company. We're right here in Mount Laurel. Uh, we also have offices in Cherry Hill and Glassboro, and our phone number is 856-273-1282, or you can reach me by email at dan, D-A-N, at rs-co.com. Great. Do you have a website? Yes. It's actually under Now Financial Network, so it's www.nownowfinancialnetwork.com. Well, I have so many more questions I want to ask you, Dan. Is there any specific advice that you'd like to give signing off for our viewers and listeners today? Uh, the only thing is try and take the, the stress of taxes out of your life because it's really a self-inflicted pain at this point that if you take the time to do the planning and fit that in with your goals, uh, you know, I mentioned we had clients for all those years. There's nothing better than talking to a client 15 years ago who says, you know, I'd like to retire and this is the lifestyle I'd like to have and be their accountant and, and coach them and teach them over the years and watching them enjoy their retirement or watching their kids graduate college. So, you know, I think your accountant become a, can become a very important part of your life and also help you meet your financial uh, financial goals. Sounds awesome. Thank you, Dan. Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, thank you. <laughs> when it's time for Jersey Mike's to give a sub some sizzle, this is the way. The way it's always been.